Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Tonight, the SEC took an action which prompted a warning from the president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce that the SEC might not approve any spot Bitcoin ETF applicants. Now, she specifically called this action a delay signal, but it would be the end of the line for at least a couple of the earliest applicants as the SEC can't delay them any further. And so look, I'll tell you the bottom line of my opinion, I'm going to give you all the specifics, specific, specifics, that's not a word. I'll give you all the specifics as we go through this latest Moon Lambo hot jam. But for me, the bottom line in the end is, although yes, I acknowledge, of course, there's some small possibility that this damn thing might not go through. Uh, we, maybe we don't see any approval, uh, you know, on Tuesday or Wednesday, the, the, the 10th. Uh, after reading a bunch of perspectives on this topic, I still firmly believe what is most probable is that this thing is going to get proved. But this is of the utmost importance for all of us here in the world of crypto, because if this does not get approved, there will be absolute chaos. I don't know for how long, but my God, it's going to be a bloody day in crypto markets. I'll tell you that. It's going to be bad because the whole world, the whole world of crypto anyway, certainly, is counting on this thing getting passed. Um, so I'll share with you perspective from a bunch of people who are in the know and who have actual sources and, um, and after reading as, as much as I could find from reputable sources who actually know people involved in this process, uh, after reading as much as I could on this, I've got a, a batch of tabs open at the top, and I'm going to share with you the parts that I found to be most credible and interesting, and that's why I'll just tell you again at the outset of the video, I'm not alarmed, but uh, anything's possible technically. Uh, before going any further, though, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind, I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Uh, I will note that at the moment, the market is not spooked. Bitcoin and the entire asset class, broadly speaking, it's just, it's just moving sideways. So this news has been out for a little bit probably for, been out for at least eight hours or so, or at least widely circulated within the last eight hours. Um, if anyone's curious at the time I'm recording this video, it is 2.19 a.m., so technically it was yesterday, but I don't say it counts as yesterday until I go to sleep and then wake up, so for me it's still today. Uh, but you can see Bitcoin, 46838 bucks. Um, and so here you go, here it is. Perry Ann Boring, the founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, issued this warning. She wrote, Spot Bitcoin ETF update. The SEC just issued additional comments on pending applicants' S1s. This is a delay signal. So, a couple of things, like I was kind of alluding to at the outset of this video, there are a couple applicants, at least, going from memory, that, uh, you know, if, if anything's delayed, like, for them, it's the end of the road. There, there is no more delay. Like, they're, they, procedurally, it's not possible to, to delay at least a couple of them. Uh, I think the Black Rock one, you could delay that one and maybe some others until, I don't know, maybe it's March or so, I want to say. Just kind of pulling from memory here. But um, it, it, issuing additional comments this late in the game perhaps caught some people off guard. Perhaps it wasn't expected on the, the S1s that have to be filed by each of these, these applicants here. But does it actually signal that there's that the SEC is likely to delay here? And look, my position has I've been very clear about this. So if you've been following my channel, you know you know what I'm going to say here. Uh, I do not believe for a moment that the SEC, at the direction of Kim Jong Gensler, would demand that the staff put in thousands and thousands of man hour into uh, getting to this point, only to deny this at the end. And then there's all the inside sources that yes, this is going through. So at this late hour, if this additional uh, it, you know, happening here was a delay signal. Fine, possible. I would be very surprised. Um, somebody responded to Perry Ann Bourne and said, I think you are wrong, dear Perry Ann. The SEC cannot decline any decision. This would result in super crazy court fights from all the players. Okay, uh, slightly naive, I respectfully state. Uh, the SEC absolutely could deny this. It would just be a stupid uh, and arbitrary and capricious decision should they do so. And so Perry quipped back, I doubt the SEC has considered liability in several of its actions. Oh, you think? <laughs> she is hitting the nail on the head there. Absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, th think about their actions even with Grayscale. I mean, that's, that's part of what put us in this position. The fact that Grayscale had the cojones to actually fight back and defeat the SEC in court, that's what put us here. There are also, there's no shortage of that. If you've been following the SEC v. Ripple case, there's been no shortage of instances where the SEC has shot itself in the foot. 
They make dumb decisions, and I can only assume that a lot of it comes down to the fact that these are some arrogant pricks. Is that a fair assumption? I'd say yes. Here you have a post from attorney Jeremy Hogan. Uh, he simply wrote, The SEC just issued additional comments to the Bitcoin ETF applicants. No one freak out yet. Okay, now you can freak out. It doesn't necessarily mean there will be a delay on the ETFs, but we sure are coming down to the wire here. Uh, yes, this is certainly true. So now that it's after midnight here, uh, 2.22, not, well, now it's 2.22 uh, a.m., that's central time, my time zone, uh, it is Tuesday. This thing has got to, uh, got to happen by tomorrow. That's the word on the street here, so we're going to know soon. Uh, I just, <laughs> like, if, if it actually doesn't go through, I admit I will be absolutely astonished, but it will be a bad day for crypto markets. That would be my expectation here. Uh, here's a post from Fox Business journalist Eleanor Terrett. Uh, she reposted what the president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, uh, Chamber of Digital Commerce said, and Eleanor Terrett wrote the following. And she has sources. I mean, she's an actual journalist at Fox Business, so yeah, she knows some people, and she wrote the following. Just spoke with a couple of people who received additional comments. They say they're not worried, and the SEC hasn't conveyed a change of plans. My sense is that they're fairly confident this is just part of the process to get everything in before January 10th. So there you go. Some last minute dotting of I's, crossing of T's. Here you have uh, James Seifert. Uh, he, along with Eric Balkunas, have been the two that have been most, most uh, uh, closely watched, let's say, on the topic, in social media certainly, on the topic of anything having to do with the spot Bitcoin ETF. And both of them work for Bloomberg. And I do have something from Eric Balkunas. It's going to be a little bit later in the video. Uh, but James Seifert doesn't, uh, doesn't think that uh, this is actually a concern. He, he doesn't agree with Perry Ann Boring, the president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, that this is a delay signal. Or at least not necessarily. And so here's what he said. Number one, this is true. Comments came back on those S1 documents with the fees that we all went crazy over this morning. This isn't out of the ordinary. And I'll pause to note, I talked about that in a, a video that I published probably like eight hours ago. So if you're curious about information on that, go check it out. Uh, I'm not going to run through it again for the purposes of this video. Uh, then he says, number two, expect to see more amendments tomorrow because of this. And number three, that said, I don't think this is necessarily a delay signal. Really, this just shows how quickly the SEC is turning these things around. Borderline unheard of to send over a document to the SEC in the morning and get comments back the same day, I think. If they wanted to delay, the issuers wouldn't have gotten comments back tonight. I don't know if I've ever been tagged as many times or had a tweet sent to me so many times via direct message or text or instant Bloomberg. It was like a barrage. Ha <laughs> ha. I get it. So this, this little firestorm, when, when the Chamber of Digital Commerce President Perry and Boring put that out, uh, yes, it's safe to say that uh, it caught the attention of a lot of people, uh, widely circulated 1.1 million views. <laughs> my God, that's a lot. And again, that was at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, my time zone. Bet you they ain't even been eight hours yet. 1.1 million views. That's pretty crazy. Um, and then uh, James Seifert shared a comment from Scott Johnson. Uh, not familiar with Scott Johnson. Not that that means anything. I'm just mentioning that. Uh, but he is a finance lawyer. And uh, he had the following to say about this. And again, this was shared by James Seifert of Bloomberg. He said, yes, it's unheard of. And to remind anyone, S1s do not need to be complete when 19 B4s are approved. Again, I'll just pause your note. What he's saying is unheard of is the turnaround time from the SEC, the quick response. And anyone that's been following the SEC v. Ripple case will know that the SEC isn't exactly speedy. <laughs> Unless they really want to be, obviously. Oh my god, the delays. Anyway, Scott continues. Take futures ETFs in 2022. Hashtex didn't even get initial comments until after its 19 B4 was approved. More than anything, these quick comments demonstrate SEC working to push everything forward for a quick approval and launch versus what we saw with futures. And so again... After considering all these perspectives, and I still got more to share with you, uh, I just am like, it doesn't look to me like anything's changed to the negative, not actually. I can understand why Perry and Boring had the response that she had, but uh, I don't, I'm not concerned. I'm just saying, I personally am not concerned. Uh, and then Eleanor Turk, Fox Business Journalist, also had this to add. And this was interesting. I didn't know that this was the case, but check this out. Any single, as it turns out, any single commissioner could just screw this over for the whole planet. I kid you not. Check this out. 
Eleanor wrote the following. An interesting caveat here on how the five-member SEC commission could potentially delay a Bitcoin spot ETF approval. While there's no scheduled commission vote on the ETF, each commissioner apparently has the right to request a review and full commission vote under the clause cited below as they see fit, even if the matter has already been assigned and approved via delegated authority. Now that's something. So if one of these humans is like, yeah, I don't like this, they could just destroy this. At least, well, I mean, temporarily. I still think ultimately, no matter what, look, this is inevitable. Even if we have the most disastrous scenario here and uh, and this is a delay signal and uh, everything's a little on fire and the market crater's down, uh, it's always going to be temporary. Like, yeah, market, market can still get spooked. I mean, it's stupid-ass humans making emotional decisions on, you know, highly consequential, important financial decisions. But it's so like humans, humans going to human, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> even, even if so, uh, markets come back and this is an inevitability because there's just, I mean, God, the number of lawsuits should this occur. Whew, it's going to be insane if that happens. Uh, Eric Balkunas, uh, this is the other uh, Bloomberg guy here, senior ETF analyst for Bloomberg. He wrote to Eleanor Turt on social media platform X and said the following. I'm sure it's accurate reading of regulations, but I'm not worried about it. Gensler directed all this. Staff working tirelessly with issuers. Approval is the plan. No reason to complicate it. Okay, and so, again, that makes all the sense in the world to me. I just, again, <laughs> I get it. I, there was an unexpected response from the SEC. The world didn't expect it. But I, I just, I can't fathom. It's just, I, right? The idea of all these thousands of all the unnecessary work the SEC didn't have to do, they get the same outcome anyway. They'll still get sued into oblivion. And so um, somebody responded to Eric Balkunas and said, what would the applicants do if denied? Would they just throw up their arms and say, I give up? Or would they go back to work to try to appease SEC? Legal recourse? Eric Balkunas responded with the following. Mass freak out. Uh, yeah, that's for damn sure. <laughs> and prob a batch of new lawsuits because what grounds do they have to deny? Knocking out of the park. Absolutely, that makes sense. Now, uh, Perry Ann Boring, um, after seeing some additional thoughts from a number of individuals in the world of crypto here and on social media platform X, she did have an updated comment, and uh, this is about two and a half hours later, 8.56 p.m. Central Time, and Perry Ann wrote the following. After reading commentary from people like, like uh, Seifert, the uh, James Seifert and Eleanor Terrett, I hope I am wrong in my interpretation, but I'm worried the SEC has more tools at its disposal to block spot Bitcoin ETFs from coming to market. Chair Gensler doesn't want to go down without a fight. I'm hoping for a successful launch this week. And you know what? Fair enough. I say that's fair enough. I, I totally understand why she had the concern that she had. Nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. Uh, but based on, you know, hearing what people have to say, inside sources, so on and so forth, and all these behaviors, my point is made clear. You guys let me know what you think, though. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.